I love Peter Gabriel. To celebrate the release of his new album out on the 1st of December, I've decided to talk about all of his studio productions. I thought it might be a nice way to celebrate the joys he gave me as a fan and as a composer, an insightful way to start a conversation with other fans, and an interesting introduction for those who want to discover more about Gabriel's music. This video is about Peter Gabriel's 1977 solo debut, also known as Car, for obvious reasons. We'll look at the story of the album, at its significance for Gabriel, and at its legacy. Hello, Top Potters, this is Simon Mas, your friend with a master degree in music and a strong connection with this music. When Gabriel left Genesis in 1975, people wrote the band off. Everyone assumed that it was Gabriel to do all the work, but Genesis went on successfully. So, everyone thought that Gabriel didn't do anything at all within the band. The year that Gabriel stayed off the music business to be with his family seemed like an eternity. Charisma, his and Genesis's label, was pushing for the release of solo material. The pressure kept mounting. Peter wanted his first solo LP to sound nothing like Genesis. He needed to assert his personality, to prove that he was an artist in his own right. I was 15 the first time I listened to this album. An older cousin of mine had a music room in the attic of his house. I remember climbing upstairs in that room and blasting the music loud. It did sound very different from Genesis. And yet, 30 years later, on listening to it with somewhat fresh ears and a bit more experience, Slowborn, Here Comes the Flood, Moribund the Burgmeister, the lyrics of Down the Dolce Vita, and why not Modern Love, have, I don't know, the DNA of a Genesis song in them. They could have been, and then there were three, sounding different, of course, because of the production and the people performing them, but there's a deeper connection between Gabriel and Genesis that was still there. Apart from the deep similarities and the fresh coating on the music, how does this album hold up in 2023? I'll be honest, perhaps a bit harsh, today Peter Gabriel won sounds dated. Before telling you why, kindly put a like to the video if you liked it this far. It will tell YouTube to show it to other fans. Thank you! Back in 1977, when the energy and the excitement of the studio sessions had died down, Gabriel reflected that the album was a bit overproduced. Granted, producer Bob Ezrin was not known for subdued music. He had made his name producing acts like Alice Cooper or Kiss, the name just two. Ezrin himself stated clearly that his role was pushing Gabriel over the top when the singer's instincts were too gentle and British about things. Like when he tied the singer to a column in the studio and forced wax his armpits with gaffer tape. Gabriel needed to scream more aggressively during Modern Love. True story. Today, Carr certainly sounds like a late 1970s adult rock record, with its bombastic orchestral moments and larger-than-life arrangements, but that of a production turns the record into a very interesting and intriguing experiment. One that deserves more attention than he usually gets. The imposing gestures in the music support the meaning of the lyrics, helping conveying it in a crucial and very subtle fashion. What gestures am I talking about? I'm talking about the way waiting for the big one stops and waits for the statement of its main theme. about the orchestra in Down the Dolce Vita. The over-the-top singing in Modern Love. The, 
those and other grandiose moments are almost always empty and anticlimactic. They don't end with a bang, they don't help develop the song. They almost never bring more excitement or further drama. They just leave the listener there wondering if something went wrong. There are only two moments in which the climax plays out correctly. The instrumental break in Down the Dolce Vita starting at about 3 minutes and 22 seconds into the track. works because it comes at a moment of high stakes in the lyrics, a trip to save the song characters' lives. The other successful climatic moment is in the B section of Maribond the Burgmeister. In fact, Maribond is the only straight hero of the whole record. The other songs offer a gallery of people out of place or conducting an empty and unsatisfactory life. Even the glorious Salisbury Hill is about a character, Gabriel himself, it's pretty obvious, that is leaving his tired certainties to embark on a trip towards the unknown to get back home. And Gabriel sometimes does more than just exploring these outcasts and their raison d'etre. Peter Gabriel, the solo artist, is trying to destroy the mystique around Peter Gabriel, the Genesis frontman. Sure, he had employed irony and a sense of humor in his former role too. Think the Battle of Epping Forest, or Counting Out Time, or Harold the Barrel, but here it is different. Modern love feels like an old man out of touch with the kids trying to be funny and missing the point. Excuse Me is a cabaret comedy number that wouldn't be out of place in a vaudeville variety show. Waiting for the big one is a drunk blues that stops and restarts with a drunk Robert Fripp playing straight pentatonics. <gasps> the record ends with Here Comes the Flood. This is the one song that is clearly overproduced. Its climax is obscured by all the stuff that is going on in the arrangement. The grandiose empty gestures that somehow work in the other tracks fall short here. Pity. But overall, this is still an album worth a listen. Here, the godfather of prog rock coming to terms with the end of prog fuel. Times had changed. And with this record, you find a 27-year-old man fighting with his own legacy and trying to incorporate new music ideas in his arsenal. So, however dated the sound might seem today on a superficial listen, you'll find plenty of satisfaction in these tracks if you listen more closely. Along with a message of confusion, dissatisfaction and quiet depression, this album carries along. But what if you had played this album to death and wanted something else? Ok, here's Papa Simon coming with some listening advice for you, but first… Please consider telling me what you liked about this video and what I could do better, and subscribe to my channel. Without your inputs, giving you better videos is really hard. And without your subscriptions, I can't get monetized. The pennies YouTube will give me are going to be spent hiring a professional to edit my videos, so that I can produce more free stuff for you. What's not to love? Anyhow, if you like Peter Gabriel 1, you can do worse than look into Berlin by Lou Reed. Produced by Mr. Bob Ezrin too. This is for you if you like the depressive and defeated feeling car, but be careful, Berlin is really depressing. And then there were three by Genesis. One could say that Gabriel beat his former bandmates by a good year when it came to refreshing his music. You'll find a lighter and dreamier side of the connection between the band and Gabriel on that record. Despite the obvious difference in sound, I think you might like, and then there were three, two, one. Ignition! Permission to Land by Darkness. 
There's plenty of wacky humor in there too, plus over-the-top rock production and some falsetto that would be at home on Slowburn. Time to close shop for now. This was Simon Mas. See you soon for more music-related content on this very channel. For the moment, stay cool and keep your top hat on. Bye! Simon Mas, music you love.